Hope you like dusty old stuff. And no, I'm not talking about me. <laughs> Welcome back to this Guild Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 39 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you're not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on. And I have been going pretty hardcore on my latest project. And that is this Tamiya Blazing Blazer. Oh, it's, yes. <laughs> it's, um... It's in pieces now, but that's because we've been doing a lot of work restoring this truck. And in its day, I will say, nostalgia plays a very big role in why I'm rebuilding this truck. That said, I didn't own one when I was a kid, and I could never have afforded one even if I wanted one back then. But I have one now. And uh, one of the things with nostalgia is that you oftentimes forget about all of the trouble or maybe the way in which something was constructed, or the decisions that were made, or why they would do those things. And uh, you kind of gloss over all those details and you just kind of build something and you enjoy it for what it was historically. Uh, and you try to not think about any of the technical stuff. This thing is a technical nightmare. <laughs> it is not a good design by any means. Um, it really is form over function in every way possible. And I know that leaf springs often get a bad rap, but in this case, there is no rap whatsoever. There's no rap. This, they're the worst. There is no flexibility in these uh, leaf springs whatsoever. And I'll get into all of that later. Why don't I tell you what I've done? Since the last episode, you saw me start on the really nasty, nasty transmission. Now here it is, all cleaned up, polished, and my gosh, not looking at all like it did before. I even went to the trouble of disassembling completely, degreasing everything, and re-greasing the entire thing. Now everything went together absolutely perfectly. This hex hardware is standard. That's what it came with. In fact, when you bought the Blazing Blazer, this part was already done. They didn't really assume or think that you would want to do any construction uh, on the transmission yourself. Or they thought maybe you couldn't handle it. Uh, <laughs> regardless, uh, I did take it apart. And uh, luckily, thanks to some very astute viewers, I was able to find some pretty decent PDFs on how to dismantle and reassemble this. So, um, luckily I had that, otherwise it was gonna be all guesswork. And my guesses at sometimes are not the best. Anyway, every single piece uh, that was in there was in really great shape. Uh, it did require a lot of time cleaning. And uh, two of the ways in which I'm doing a lot of this cleaning is with a heavy duty degreaser. Don't use this inside. It's basically gasoline. <laughs> it's really nasty stuff. Wear gloves when you work with it. Spray it outdoors. Don't get it on your clothes. Don't spray it at your kids. Don't light it on fire. But it did result in a really nice, clean, brand new looking transmission. Uh, it took a lot of elbow grease and a lot of time. And I'm actually pretty pleased with the results. I got rid of that uh, team associated uh, brushed motor. I don't know what I did with it. I went ahead and replaced it with a Mabushi RS540 sport tuned Tamiya motor. And you really can't get much more Tamiya than that. Uh, interesting note on the Blazing Blazer in the original Toyota 4x4 pickup, it used a 540 can. On the Bruiser, it uses a larger 550 can motor, or sometimes even a larger one. I'm not entirely sure i can't remember regardless love the old school graphics of that motor and uh yeah there you go transmission and um transfer case plate all done polished up looking good uh, not totally lubricated yet not sure what i'm gonna do uh, i may end up cutting gaskets to actually fit between the portions of this transmission so we don't have to put any of that silicone on there or we'll just leave it as is because maybe this is just going to be a shelf queen i'm putting a lot of time into it i would hate to get it muddy 
Okay, on to the next step. Uh, this required a ton more work, and I'm going to show you why in a moment, but here is the axle and uh, all the uh, wheels and tires all completely redone. Now, uh, this being the front axle, there's a lot more steering components, a lot more bits and pieces that had to be cleaned and polished and fixed, uh, but you can see the result of my efforts definitely paid off. This looks absolutely brand spanking new. Um, one of the ways in which I was able to achieve such a clean uh, restoration was using a sonic cleaner. And uh, what that basically is, is, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's, it's like an ultrasonic cleaner. It uses uh, some sort of power source <laughs> to agitate the molecules of water uh, that you put into this cleansing bath uh, to basically vibrate off all the grime and dirt and gunk. And uh, yes, I did use the heavy duty engine degreaser to get this looking this clean and shiny, uh, and it did get a polish, but the main source of all the cleanliness is that ultrasonic cleaner, and it works so well. It cleaned off all the dirt, all the grime, all the grease, and any deposits left behind by any of those things to make this basically showroom shine fresh. Uh, there is also a lot of effort that had to go into uh, fixing the actual um, selectable four-wheel drive. These uh, these things, these manual hubs, actually work, and you can change it so you basically get freewheeling up front if you want it. In reverse, it always just works. Uh, don't ask me why. I think that's probably a good thing. Uh, but you just switch that out, a little bit of a spring inside, and then it locks back into four-wheel drive. It's very similar to the SSD-style uh, locking hubs that uh, just came out a couple years ago. Uh, these are basically where they got that idea from. Uh, but works really, really super well. Now, on to these leaf springs. These are the original leaf packs, and as you can see, they're nice, shiny chrome almost. Uh, they have zero spring in them, and they are spot welded together, so you cannot take them apart unless you want to ruin them. And I do not want to do that because they're original and they look fantastic. Um, so, <laughs> for whatever reason, this truck did not ship with any kind of shock other than these leaf springs. Uh, optionally, you could buy shocks. Uh, they were originally, I think, for the Sand Scorcher, uh, or they were originally for this, probably. Uh, and um, I have a couple of them around here, but they're not in very good shape, so I ended up buying a replacement set on eBay. Those will be here in a couple weeks. Uh, but essentially, uh, those also don't offer any damping, <laughs> because if these are so gosh darn rigid, those shocks aren't gonna work either. They're really just there for cosmetics. So um, are we gonna change anything there? No, because we're doing a box stock restoration. I'm not trying to make this better. I'm not trying to make it anything else other than what it already is. And that's just a nice example of one of the very early RCs from this hobby. So there you go. Uh, what else? Okay, uh, also got the uh, drive shafts all cleaned up and um, those are functioning nominally. <laughs> There's a little bit of slop, uh, but that's to be expected with brass. I don't know why they chose to use brass in those cases, but they did. Uh, there's a lot of slop there, as you can see. Uh, not the cleanest examples ever, but they are functional and they are working really well. Also cleaned up the motor plate. Uh, this sits on the chassis and also functions as your body pin holder as well. So uh, that's uh, all done as well. Uh, I also did the rear wheel and uh, you probably saw some of the cavitation of the ultrasonic cleaner at work on those parts. Uh, it is a pretty great investment to have made. And I mean, honestly, for $89, you cannot go wrong. Definitely something that if you are going to be doing a lot of restoration or you like having showroom uh, quality pieces of old junk, 
get yourself an ultrasonic cleaner. I'll put a link down to the Amazon uh, product that I ended up picking up. Oh, one other thing. There's a lot of cases, uh, especially in this vehicle, where bushings cannot be replaced. They're like hardwired into how these things were constructed and uh, how the parts came out of the box. So in a lot of cases, um, I use the bushings again because they're still in great condition 40 years later. Uh, where I could though, I did replace with bearings and you can see on the output uh, drive shaft on the axle there, there is bearings there and also on the uh, pinion on the inside of that. Uh, there were bearings already on the wheels, so um, that's about as good as it's gonna get for that. What's left to do? Uh, well, we've got to tackle the entire rest of the chassis. Uh, the uh, rear axle needs to be done through the same process that I did the front. Uh, I've got replacement uh, bumpers that I'm going to be using. They're actually um, billet aluminum, so that'll be pretty cool to have on there. Uh, the electronics box needs to be polished and um, cleaned. I did the top, but uh, I think we're going to have to do the rest of it still. Uh, all of the electronics needs to be redone. All the stuff on the main chassis needs to be taken apart and cleaned as well. So there's still an awful lot of work to do on this model. Uh, I am probably going to take a break because man, I spent the last like five days working on this front axle. And uh, while it did turn out really good, I'm kind of tired of cleaning, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, so many things do still on this. Okay, that's uh, where the Blazing Blazer stands. Uh, there are two options for you, and this is the question for the week, and uh, where I need audience participation is, there are two main body colors uh, that are basically chosen uh, on the Blazing Blazer. There's the box art black, uh, which looks really great, and then there's also the side panel box art red. I also saw a blue one that somebody did that was pretty cool. Uh, why don't you tell me down below in the comments what color we should go with? Black, red, or blue? Those are your three options. And thank you very much for commenting. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. And if you're enjoying this series, What's on the Bench, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. If you're watching this show on the day that it came out, I've got another WHATNOT auction happening tonight, uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I've got a whole ton of stuff that I'm going to be auctioning it off. Uh, there are some very low reserves on some things and no reserves on others. Um, everything from full running, ready to go, uh, RC trucks to uh, projects to bodies to all kinds of cool stuff. So I hope you will check that out. I will be sure to put a link down in the description below so you can check that out tonight. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>